Welcome to Milan Recording Studios. My name is James Pavel Chakras, and in today's video, I am genuinely excited to bring you a review of the Kawaii ES110. Recently, I've been doing kind of a video series. It's been, it hasn't had an official title really, but it's kind of been the search for the best digital piano under $1,000 or under $800, something in that price bracket, under $1,000. And so far, I've reviewed the Yamaha P125, the Roland FP30, and the Casio P. XS3000. Of these three, I've found that the Yamaha P125 is the overall best winner. It has the best speaker setup. It has the best overall action, although I do kind of prefer the Roland FP30 action a little bit as well. Between those two, it's kind of up for debate, but overall, the Yamaha is for sure the winner. It has the best sounds, it has the one of the best actions, the best speaker setups, and it's also very easy to use. But how does Kawhi's digital piano in the same price bracket stack up against these other instruments? In today's video, I'm going to be unboxing this and checking it out and giving you guys my thoughts and opinions on it. I'm kind of expecting it to be pretty good for a couple of reasons. First of all, if we think about the digital pianos I've reviewed so far, we've got ones from Yamaha, Roland, and Casio. The Roland's action is pretty good, but it has a few other flaws that make it not as desirable in my opinion, and the Casio, as some of you may know already, had a number of massive fatal flaws. Neither Roland nor Casio have any experience making a true acoustic piano as far as I know, so that would mean that when it comes to making a digital piano, they're going to be a few steps behind Yamaha, who has had nearly a hundred years of experience making acoustic pianos and other acoustic keyboard instruments. Yamaha is well known for having extremely high quality pianos, and I believe some of this experience has trickled, trickled down into their digital piano line, which in my opinion is why the P125 is as good as it is. Kawaii is another Japanese manufacturer who has a pretty long history of making high quality pianos. These days they're probably most well known for their Shigeru Kawaii line which is a very very high quality um, acoustic piano that's handcrafted in Japan and some of their digital pianos are also quite well known for being extremely high quality too. The one that comes to mind to me first is the MP11 SE that is easily the best digital piano for the pianist that is available on today's market. The action in that thing is absolutely incredible. Obviously this will not have the same action response as an MP11 SE, it uses a much different action, but I'm expecting it will be still pretty good. Kawhi, I'm thinking, is going to be the strongest competitor so far with Yamaha. However, that's just my speculation before unboxing this, so let's open it up and check out what actually is inside here. Of course it will be an ES110, but let's actually see just how good it is. Let's open this which doesn't want to open, so that's why I have scissors here. Boom, and boom, that was easy. Now we throw those away if they want to go away. And we'll put the scissors down, and this one came back, go away. Nope, okay, it wants to stay there. So, the ES110, I've already done a video of the ES8, which oddly enough, even though 8 is a much lower number than 110, the ES8 is actually a higher quality, more expensive digital piano. I can't say I understand the logic behind the naming scheme of Kawhi's digital pianos in this case, but I did like the ES8. I found it to be a really nice digital piano with a light, responsive action that seems to handle just about everything pretty dang well, and also the sounds in it were really fantastic too. Had a good speaker setup, it was easy to hear and overall I really really liked it. Now already in the unboxing experience I'm seeing some similarities to the way the MP11 SE was unboxed. They have a cool blown up diagram here on the small flaps that shows how everything is packed inside of the box. Just a really nice touch and I really really enjoy that. There's a little packing slip thing here we can get rid of that. Let's get rid of my knife and let's open this up and check out what's inside. There's a protective cardboard sheet here, we can get rid of that. We've also got some little styrofoam pads here that we can drop on the floor. This one seems to be so far the best protected um, digital piano in this price bracket as well. It's very very well padded and the box has had a bit of abuse to it as well. It seems to have a bit of a rough, uh, rougher transit than some of the other ones I've bought and the instrument is undamaged. So we have it open up now. Let me tear off this foam 
and just take a quick look at what it looks like and then I'll take it out of the box and let you guys see it too, but I'm just really excited. This is some tough taker. I'm just really excited to see what this thing looks like. Let's open this up. Eh. All right, look at that. So that is the ES-110. All right, let's get this out of the box and let you guys see it. It looks nice and sleek, but one thing I am noticing on this one is that it seems like, now these might be the speaker grills here, but it seems like the speakers on it are actually hidden. On the Yamaha P125, there's two obvious speaker grills in the corners of the instrument, and this one doesn't seem to have those. I'll have to take a checker look. There are a couple of slits up here that might be being used as the speaker grills, but I'm expecting that the speaker setup on this digital piano might not be quite as strong as the P125. But let's take it out of the box and check it out anyway. So I'm actually so impressed with the packaging job of the ES-110 that I actually thought I'd show you the inside of the box here if any of you are interested in that. I haven't done that for most of the other reviews because like the Roland and stuff were just kind of just a keyboard and a box. But Kawhi's put a lot of attention to detail here. First of all, I mentioned this earlier. There's the blown up diagram of the where everything is supposed to go in the box. Really, really nice attention to detail and I appreciate that a lot. It seems like such a small useless thing, but actually it's kind of cool. These are the little foam uh, t top covers I mentioned earlier, the Yamaha had something similar, but none of the keyboards I've reviewed so far have had one in the middle. And they're also labeled, it says ES110 Top C, so if I unbox three keyboards and have all the foam parts strewn around, I'll know which ones belong to the ES110. This one's labeled Top Left, also has some Japanese characters and stuff like that too, and this one's labeled Top Right as well. So this is the ES110, of course it didn't have the rips and the foam when I unboxed it, it was perfectly normal. That's what the ES110 looks like here. You can get an idea. So these are in fact the speaker grills. There's a little slit here that you can see. I'll show you this in more detail later. But the, the speakers are up on top, but the amount of sound that the speakers can escape from is only about that. So we'll see how that sounds. I kind of have a low expectations for the actual quality of the speakers, but from what I can tell, the action and everything seems to be pretty nice. Let me see if I can get this out of the box here, and then I can show you the trinkets that are underneath of the ES-110. It's not terribly heavy, but because of the foam, it's a little awkward to move around. Let me put it back here. There we go. It's not terribly heavy. And these are the things that are underneath of the ES-110. This knife did not come with the ES-110. Pretend that doesn't exist. This here is the music desk, and I'm kind of curious what the design of the music desk is going to be because on the MP11 and the MP11 SE, I own an MP11, the music desk is a solid piece of metal and it's very well designed. Unfortunately, it's not metal with the AS110, but it's a $600 keyboard. Couldn't really expect a metal um, desk. But this is, the dyno the, bleh, this is the design of the music desk. Seems simple and straightforward. I would really appreciate if piano Digital piano companies could come out with like a longer music desk. That's the only real complaint I think I will end up having with this, but it does appear to be longer than some of the other ones that I have tested in the past too. So we'll see how that works. I'm sure it'll be fine. This here is the owner's manual and also the power cable, very nicely done. And then this here is cool. Why is it cool? Because it's the damper pedal. And why is it cool? Because for this price point, this is the only digital piano I found so far that has a legitimate damper pedal. You don't know how excited I am for this because all of the other digital pianos I've reviewed, the Roland, the Yamaha, the Casio, they all have those flat square damper pedals that generally tend to wander around on the floor and overall are cheap and annoying. This one here is called the F10H and apparently it even supports half pedaling. So this is really, really wonderful and I'm really excited to get this out of the box and check it out. The damper pedal that came with the MP11 and also the MP11 SE, both of those were quite nice and I liked them a lot. And this here kind of seems like a smaller cousin to that. It's just like the single pedal unit instead of a triple pedal. Uh, how does this open? Here we go. So that is the pedal. It appears to be based off of the pedal for the MP11 SE. It really reminds me of that, except it's a single pedal unit instead of a triple. So that looks pretty dang cool. I'm excited about that. Really great um, thing as well for Kawhi to include this with their digital piano. So much better than those little square plastic ones. And finally, the last thing in the box and arguably the least exciting is the power supply. But it's also kind of the most exciting thing because with this, I can now power up the instrument and turn it on. 
What's kind of weird is that this actually, instead of plugging directly into the back of the keyboard, actually plugs into here, and then you plug it into the wall. So that's kind of neat. But let's use this power supply, plug it into the keyboard, get that all set up, and then I'll show you guys how it sounds. So here we have the Kawaii ES110 out of the box and ready to play. And as you can see, it looks quite nice. I really like the aesthetic of this instrument. It's very simple, very clean, and very nice looking. It comes in both white and black, by the way. So if you don't like the black appearance, then you can also get it in white, which probably would be kind of neat. White acoustic pianos really bug me, but I think white digital pianos in the right circumstance can look okay. But I opted for the black, so it would fit in with all the other digital pianos I have here at the studio. So so as far as the speakers are concerned, that's the first thing I wanted to address in this video of all things because that's the first thing that I thought might be an issue with this digital piano. As you remember, I unboxed the instrument and said, look at the speakers, there's not much room for the sound to come out, this might be an issue. Well, as it turns out, this isn't the only spot where sound is coming out from the internal speakers. Like with most digital pianos, you've got one speaker somewhere under here and you've also got one speaker somewhere under here and for each speaker there's a slot up here that's open and allows for sounds to come out right here. This middle slot is for the music desk. However, this isn't the only place where sound can come out. There's also a little slot in the back. It's like a little um, area that has a bunch of holes poked in it that allows for sound to come out. And there's also a large area underneath for sound to come out. So basically, they've made the entire piano as open as possible without making it look like it's as open as possible. And basically, they're trying to get as much possible out of these little 7 watt speakers as they possibly can. I said possible a lot there. And I think they did a really good job. Of course, of course, there are limitations with speakers of this size. I think the really low bass honestly sounds a bit thin and frail. That's not due to their sample. That's due to this quality of speakers. There's little to no bass response. But for overall playing, I think it sounds very, very nice, and it does have a good sound quality to it. There are a number of different sounds in the piano. There are most, mostly, most of the sounds are acoustic piano style sounds. You also have some electric pianos, some organs, and some others like string pads and vibraphone. They are very easy to access and there's actually two ways of, of selecting sounds. One is you can push the button of the desired category over and over again to toggle through the sounds. For example, here's acoustic piano, here's electric piano, and then I can press electric piano again and get a different variation of electric piano and play it again, get a different electric piano. You can also use the keys of the acoustic of the piano to select the sounds. For example, that original electric piano is low A. Now, I typically don't like the fact that piano makers these days will hide a f um, functionality of the digital piano within the keys so that you have to hold down a button and then remember what key you want for what desired effect. However, I do like that you can simply push the button over and over again to achieve a different sound, which I kind of prefer. And also you can, if you can remember what sounds are what keys, you can use the button to jump to a desired sound effect. I usually use that just to get back to the default sound to make sure I am on the default sound. But I do like the way that they did the user interface there. It's easy, it is simple to look at, but also for those of you who like the sounds being hidden in the keys, they've also done it that way. So I think that's a good compromise. It keeps the user, user interface very, very clean and simple, but also allows for a surprising amount of functionality. This digital piano actually has a surprising amount of functionality. There's all kinds of effects that you can achieve through the keys, if you will, and I don't just mean by playing it. If you can, you can hold certain buttons down and actually change a lot of different things like the reverb and the little uh, subtle background noises, like the key action noise and the way it works. There's a, lot of act there's a lot of control that you actually have with this digital piano. However, you're really going to have to pull out the owner's manual and read it every time you want to do that because unlike other digital pianos that have effects hidden in the keys, virtually nothing on this digital piano is labeled. For example, Yamaha's P125 has a option where you can toggle these internal speakers and make them turn off by holding down two buttons and pushing a key somewhere up here. And on that digital piano, it's labeled. On this one here, I believe it has the same effect. If I remember correctly from the owner's manual, it's this C sharp and this D sharp that you can use. Might be the ones in here, I don't remember. But one of these black keys up here, one of these pairs of black keys, you can use to toggle the speakers on and off, but it's not labeled anymore on the instrument. This has the benefit of being very clean, but the downside of it being virtually impossible to remember how to do these effects unless you've owned this digital piano for many years. So it's kind of a double-edged sword, if you will. There's benefits to 
having the user interface being so clean, but also it's kind of annoying because you have to pull out the owner's manual every time you want to tweak the sounds. However, a lot of those sounds that you'd want to tweak probably wouldn't even be something you'd use on a regular basis. I mean, how often are we using the transpose function on a digital piano? I myself, unless I'm bored and want to mess around, I hardly ever use it. So that is the user interface of this digital piano. Overall, quite simple to use. The very basic effects are right there at your fingertips. The basic sounds, the metronome, all that stuff is very, very easy to use. Now let's check out what the sound of this digital piano is like. And from my experience, I really, really like it. What I'm going to do is start off by playing one of my favorite piano pieces to play at the moment, which is the first fugue from Bach's Well-Tempered Clavier. And we will test out the sound of the piano and also the precision of the action, which is undoubtedly one of the most important aspects to a digital piano. So as you can hear, the sound of this digital piano is really, really lovely. It's clean, it's bright, it's pure, it sounds really great. And there's also very nice attention to detail in that sound, which I will touch on a bit later if I remember. But the first thing I wanted to discuss is the action of this digital piano. And I'm a little bit on the fence about what to say about it. The first thing I wanted to discuss is the weight of a, of a piano's action. Typically, and you'll know this if you've watched basically any of my videos, when it comes to a piano's action, whether a digital piano or an acoustic piano, I tend to prefer a more heavy, more substantial feeling action. The reason for this is if you get used to playing a piano or a digital piano with a heavy, substantial action, going to a piano that has a lighter action is actually quite easy and it becomes very easy to play basically anything on that piano. If you get used to playing on a piano or digital piano with a very light action and then you go to play say an acoustic piano that has a naturally heavier action there's going to be more of a learning cur curve and it's actually going to be more difficult to go from playing on a light action that you're used to to adjusting to a heavy action than the other way around that is the reason i prefer the feel of a heavy action also just myself personally i generally do prefer the feel of a heavier action i find that a lot of the times i'm able to get better dynamic control from an acoustic piano that has a heavier action compared to one with a light action so when it comes to digital pianos, I tend to prefer the ones that have a heavy action. For example, Kawai's MP11SE has a very heavy, substantial action. In my opinion, it's the most piano-like in the stage piano market, and I really love it. I love practicing on my MP11SE every day. <clears throat> now this instrument has a light action. It's very, very light, very fluid, very easy to play. So in a way that's good and in a way that's bad. It's good because it's very easy to play. It's very fun to play. You heard how good those trills came out there. That was excellent. Very, very easy to play quick and fast. So it's a lot of fun to play. However, when it comes to a digital piano, this isn't the most piano-like of an experience when it comes to the action you will find. I'm not saying that that's bad because the playing experience of this piano is actually quite wonderful. But if you're looking for a very, very piano-like experience in a digital piano, this won't probably be your first option. There are others on the market, such as the MP11SE that I mentioned. I know it's in a completely different price bracket. I'm just mentioning it that have 
a more heavy piano-like action. Having said that, I really do love the action on this piano, and that's kind of why I'm on the fence about whether or not I really like it or not. Like, I do like it, but you know what I mean. It's a little bit difficult to really say that I truly like it because it's a lot lighter than many of the other actions that I typically go, oh my gosh, this feels amazing. Let's play a little bit more and talk about some of the attention to detail in the sound and also give me some more time to finalize my opinion on what the action of this digital piano is like. One of my favorite things about the piano sound of this instrument is the attention to detail. What do I mean by that? Well, specifically, I'm referring to the ambient sounds up here in the treble. In a real acoustic piano, when you have the, the damper pedal pressed down, which lifts all of the dampers off of the strings, and you play a single note on the piano, all of the other strings of the piano will be resonating in harmony with that note, creating this washy, echoey tone that's absolutely gorgeous. And not all digital pianos will do that. Those that don't emulate that effect end up having a very sterile, fake-sounding sound. Whereas this piano, because it emulates that effect, has a much more realistic tone up here in the treble, at least from what I can tell. You, you hear what I'm talking about, right? When I push the pedal down, First of all, you hear the damper noise, that's a nice touch. Then if you play a single note, especially up here in the treble, you can hear that almost like a massive amount of reverb. And that is the artificial sound of strings resonating along with that note. They've done a very good job on that. It actually does sound quite convincing from what I can tell to the speakers, and I think it's a very, very lovely touch. If they hadn't done that, it would have felt a lot more artificial and a lot more fake. As I mentioned, the sound of the of this instrument has a lot of different piano variants. I was on the default one just there, but let's take a look at one of the other ones. Here's the next one. Sounds like it's a more mellow version of the same thing. Here's another one. A more bright, piercing version. Here's another one. That's a very, very bright, kind of like a rock or boogie type piano. What's the next one going to be? Sounds quite nice. I feel like we might have looped back around to the default piano because that one sounds really good. Yeah, we looped that was the default piano because this is that mellow one that followed it up. So those are all of the piano sounds on the Kawai. And there's also other categories as well as the electric piano and the organ category, which is lumped into one, and also the others category. Now I'll touch on those more in a minute, but the first thing I wanted to talk about before I move on to that is the damper pedal of this piano. Needless to say, this thing is absolutely amazing. 
in most digital pianos of this price point, what you'll end up with, and I don't actually have one out, so I can't really show you, but you've probably seen them. There'll be a square pad that'll probably be about this size here that's just a little flappy kind of thing that you set on the ground and you push down on your foot. This, however, is a legitimate pedal that is actually made of metal. The underside of it is metal as well. Very, very high quality, and it's got these big sticky rubber feet here that bind very, very, very well to the floor, and it hasn't moved an inch since I've been playing it. The pedal itself has a nice feel. It's not as like substantial as a real acoustic piano's pedal would be, but I don't think it's trying to be that. And it also supports half pedaling, which is a nice touch. So that means that the, as you slowly push the pedal down and you're playing notes, the amount of sustain will gradually increase instead of being the dampers all off or the dampers all on. This is by far the best damper pedal that I have found in a digital piano of this price point, and I'm absolutely in love with this. This alone really gives the Kawhi ES110 a large head start over the other digital pianos I've reviewed so far. Those being the PXS3000 from Casio, the F330 from Roland, and the P125 from Yamaha. All of those have the little plasticky um, fl flip flop pedals. I don't know what the official name for them is. But this has an actual damper pedal, and I really, really appreciate that. Thank you, Kawhi. Before I go, let's onto before I go onto some other sounds, let's try out the default piano sound a little bit more and let's play some actual classical music on it this time again. Let's play an excerpt of Debussy's Claire de Lune and see how the action can handle that. That's a piece that requires a lot of control and a lot of subtle dynamic responses. Can this action do it? Let's find out. It did that absolutely wonderfully. The challenge with that piece, while it may seem simple, is that when you're playing a lot of those chords, your hands actually have to be like this um, chord here. Your middle finger has to be way towards the back of that black key. You really can't play it any other way and have it be natural. So your finger has to be back towards that back of the key. The challenge with this in digital pianos is that because the action is designed differently from a grand piano, the action will get heavier on many digital pianos as you go towards the back of the key, which is a feature that most acoustic pianos will not have. On a typical, especially a mid to high class acoustic piano, as you play in various spots on the key, the action will basically feel just about the same. It might get a gram or two heavier going towards the back, but it will feel just about the same. On most digital pianos, that will not be the case, and in some digital pianos, the action will be virtually impossible to play from way back here on the key. This is not the case with the ES-110. Now, it does get heavier towards the back of the key. I'm not saying that's not existent, especially on the white keys, as, you, as you're playing gently and you move your finger towards, it, towards the back of the keys. It does get heavier to play. However, when you're actually performing and when you're actually playing this digital piano, that's hardly noticeable at all. And I think in this price bracket, the ES-110 probably is the the least affected by this problem. It has this issue the least. The keys are the most playable towards the back of the keys. Hopefully you guys get what I'm trying to say there. Um, but the ES-110 action feels very consistent, especially with the black keys. They're hardly lighter, uh, they're hardly heavier to play towards the back than they are the front. It's a very consistent feel. Because the white keys are longer, it's a little bit heavier towards the back than it is the front. But overall, the action on the ES-110 is very, very playable, and that's another reason why I really, really like this action, despite the fact that it is very light and honestly not super piano-like. Let's move on to the electric piano category here for a little bit, and I'll probably return to the acoustic piano patch because I like that one a lot. The, acoustic, the electric piano here is... it's okay. Not the best, not the worst. It's, Im it's imitating a Fender Rhodes. <laughs>
I've heard worse imitations of Offender Roads, but I've also heard better. What exactly makes this not great is kind of hard to say. <laughs> But I think a lot of it is actually the dynamic response of the keys. There's kind of like these, it's hard to describe what's wrong with the, with the dynamic response of these, but it's kind of like there's dynamic plateaus. It's like, as you slowly start to play the key louder, it'll kind of be this one timbre, and then all of a sudden the same key will just change to a completely different sound and then stay that way as you continue to play the key harder and harder. And then finally there it gets to be the loudest. So. It's it's hard to explain. Let me just show you what I'm talking about, especially it's prevalent in the low bass. So for example, if I play the key quietly, it has a certain sound. And if I slowly start to increase that, you'll all of a sudden hear the sound change rather than it slowly ramping up and gradually evolving into a different sound. Right now I'm hitting the key probably about twice as hard as it was before and the sound hasn't changed. So this is light, very light, the volume's a little quieter now, but as I increase the volume and the pressure I'm pushing on the key, the volume doesn't increase. And then all of a sudden it will. And be massively louder. And then if you really hit the key hard, you can get that really growly sound. So I think that's kind of a flaw here. I'm disappointed that they didn't just simply port over the uh, the electric piano sound from the MP11. Um, that's the sound they've been using for a long time and it's actually a quite nice one. I'm a little bit sad they didn't just decide to copy paste it into the uh, ES110. That would have been actually a nice kind of a touch. And the same issue down here with the bass does prevail into the rest of the piano but not quite as noticeably. See the, up here there's a little bit more of a shift. But even still, even though there's kind of like more layers to the sound, you'll still get these random notes that will pop out much louder than you wanted them to, and sometimes notes that won't be as loud and sound the way you wanted them to. So a little bit inconsistent when you're playing it, which makes it a bit annoying, but the tone of it is not the worst I've heard. If we continue on electric piano category, the next one here is a Wurlitzer, I believe. That appears to be imitating a Wurlitzer 200A rather than the growly, rich sound of the original 200. However, it's actually not that bad and I kind of enjoy that sound. That reminds me a lot of one that would be on the MP11. There's a few variants of the Wurlitzer on the MP11 SE. Next up is kind of like a Yamaha DX type of a sound. I know a lot of people do like that sound. To me, it's not really my favorite sound when it comes to a piano instrument, so I can't really comment on how good or not good that one is. It's not my favorite. I don't spend a lot of time listening to music that has Yamaha DXs in it. Up next, I believe we should have organs. One nice thing about this action being so light is it's really, really great for organ music. It makes playing really fast very, very easy. So it's a lot of fun to play the organ on here. The last one in the E piano category is a church organ. Not the best sound in a church organ, but yeah, it's okay. The main goal of this digital piano is not to emulate a pipe organ, and many of the other sounds in here are actually quite good, like the pianos and a couple of the electric pianos, so I won't really pick on it too much for that. In the others category, we have strings. The one issue I have with the strings is the fact that when you play the notes and then let go of the notes while holding the pedal down, 
the sound decays instead of sustaining. It's the same way on the organ sound. If I, here's the church organ again. Actually, no, it's not the church organ. Where is it? Here we go. Here's the, the tone wheel organ. It's slowly fading away. Other manufacturers will have it so that when you push the pedal down, the organ sound and the string sound will sustain forever. And that, I think, is a little bit of a better way to do it. Let's just turn back to the strings sound. So there we have the slow strings. Up next is a faster, more punchy kind of a strings pad. Kind of fun. After that, I actually forget what's next. Ah, it's a bass, actually. I thought it was going to be vibraphone, but actually it's bass. And then we've also got another variant of the bass. More fitting for that piece. And then up next, I think, actually is vibraphone. No, it's a harpsichord. I'm really excited for the vibraphone sound for some reason, and it's not the vibraphone. So here's harpsichord. Not the best harpsichord, but you can tell what it is. And then I think, what's next? There's a vibraphone I've been waiting for all this time. Got a very, 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 very strong tremolo on that. Kind of like you might find on an actual vibraphone. That, I believe, is all of the sounds on the Kawaii ES-110. So let's return back to the piano sound and play that a bit more because I really, really appreciate that sound. Let's test out the low bass, which as I mentioned, doesn't really come through great on the internal speakers. This kind of, you can definitely tell it's missing if I play up here a bit more. It seems to have a little more presence than down here, but maybe that's just me. Let's try out the low bass though, because I'm sure that the actual sample sounds pretty nice. The playing experience on this instrument is really, really lovely. I love just, I love playing it. It does everything you want it to do, whether it's playing loudly or playing quietly. And as a result, playing this instrument is really, really easy. You're not sitting there playing it and going, it, I want it to do something different, but it's not doing it. The only exception to that would be that one electric piano patch I mentioned that's kind of inconsistent on the note velocities. But other than that, the uh, playing the acoustic piano patch and all the other ones really, really feel great and feel absolutely wonderful. You can tell that this is a digital piano geared towards a pianist, partly because of the simple user interface and also just because of the, the, the playing experience from a pianist's perspective is really lovely. Now let's do a final test with this instrument and play a piano piece that's really intended to be played on an acoustic piano. It demands the power of an acoustic piano, it demands the high quality action of an acoustic piano, but how well does it do on an, on an electric piano and what piece is that? Well, it's the third movement of Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata and since it's a five minute piece and this video is already pretty long, I won't play the full thing but I will play an excerpt of it and see how the ES-110 handles it.
So impressively, the Kawaii ES-110 was able to play that excerpt of the third movement with ease. It was very, very easy, not difficult at all, and it didn't present any challenges to the piece that a traditional piano wouldn't. And in fact, it almost made certain parts of it easier. I feel like those trills came out pretty decently. Those are a bit more difficult trills than in the Bach piece, but I feel like they did come out pretty good, sometimes even on a good acoustic piano. If you're having a bad day, it can be difficult to do. So the Kawaii ES-110, I think I've wrapped up just about everything I wanted to say about it, but just as a recap, the Kawaii ES-110 is, in case you couldn't tell already, is an excellent, excellent digital piano for the price. I think it would be a perfect practice piano for somebody first getting into the world of pianos, and it also would make an excellent MIDI controller, by the way, too. The action, like I've said many times, is wonderful, and it's also got two round um, MIDI outputs in the back as well. No USB ports, but it does have two MIDI's, uh, MIDI ports on the back, so you can connect it up to whatever you want to connect it up to, and it would make an excellent excellent controller um, and for a practice piano as I said before it would be great and also even for performing live it has a really good piano sound and it also has line outputs in the back so you can connect it to a larger speaker system to play for a bunch of people probably wouldn't want to play this uh, for a Coliseum of 30,000 people maybe you'd want the MP11 SE for that one but for a you know a local restaurant local club whatever this would be more than adequate for that it's a really really excellent digital piano and I absolutely love it are there any flaws with it now I'd actually legit have to sit down and think about if there's any flaws with it the first flaw I think that there would be with it is that some of the effects and um, functionality are hidden within the keys of the instrument and also they're not particularly well labeled at all so you'd have to go to the owner's manual to do that the upside to this is that a lot of those features are things you probably wouldn't use much anyway how often are you going to be adjusting the ambient noise of a piano's action I don't think it's overly powering in here so I think it's fine I would never mess with it um, but the sounds are hidden into the keys as well, which isn't my favorite thing ever. But it's not the biggest drawback because the user interface is pretty simple. And like I said, a lot of those things you probably wouldn't need to touch anyway. Are there any other flaws with this? Well, I would like to see the action be a few shades heavier just so that it feels a little bit more like a piano. But overall, the action is really excellent and there's no issue with it at all. And that's not a flaw, just little something I think could be done to improve the piano, not something that's wrong with it. Making it a little heavier would make it feel more like a real piano and make it feel great. Those are really the only things that I can think of at the moment that I dislike about the ES-110, and those are actually pretty small things. Everything else I love about it, the action is great, the playing experience is great, the sound of it is actually even really good considering these are really small speakers. Kawhi has done everything they possibly can to make it sound as good as possible, and it has a very nice open sound. It's not muffled, it's not hampered, it's just the sound of 7 watt speakers being 7 watt speakers. And of course, it's very easy to connect a better uh, amplifier or amp or my or speaker system to it if you wanted to with the direct outs. The damper pedal is probably the best thing about this instrument. It's so wonderful, has a great feel, and is a really, really excellent piece of equipment to come along with a digital piano of this price point. No other digital piano has a pedal like that. Kawhi did a great job with that. So I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this review of the Kawhi ES-110. As I stated in the video, I was excited for it. I expected it to be good. And fortunately, I'm very happy to say that it has lived up to all of my expectations and it was just as good as I had hoped it would be. Action is great, sound is great, even the pedal is great. I wasn't expecting that one. And it's a really, really fantastic digital piano. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, you might want to go check out my channel. I have lots of cool videos of pianos, organs, digital pianos, acoustic pianos, and all kinds of other cool stuff too. So if any of that sounds cool, you might want to think about subscribing. And if you do subscribe, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.